I have been so far off with recovery. So yeah. far off. And it's one of those understated, just like nutrition is understated so often. We think we can outrun a bad diet. Well, you can't outrun recovery either because the whole, like, like I keep coming back to is like, why are you training? You're training to create a greater stress on the body. So the body's like, I have to adapt to that. But if you never give it time to adapt, then you're always going to be in a breakdown state. If you're in a breakdown state, first thing that goes is lean mass. First thing that goes up is inflammation and oxidation. And we know none of those are good and viable for health. So we look at not only for health, but if you're someone who's competitive or want to do some kind of like 5K, 10K, whatever it is, CrossFit Open, who knows, you need <laughs> recovery in order to adapt and get fitter. So if we're looking at recovery metrics, it doesn't mean necessarily sitting on your butt and doing nothing, but it's that polarized, super low intensity work. Because if you're doing true high intensity and sprint interval, you need recovery because you can't do that every day. You can't go to the gym and be like, I'm going to do this every day. Your body just won't allow you. And you're going to fall into that moderate intensity, tired, but wired, sympathetically driven. Your body's going to break down. You're going to put on belly fat. You're going to go, what the hell is going on? Recovery is so essential. And as we get older, we find we need more recovery. We see though on that women are more endurance. So when we're looking at fatigability and endurance, mm -hmm. when we're doing reps and sets in our resistance training, we don't need as much recovery between because our bodies, our muscles, our muscle architecture is less fatigable than men. So we need a little bit more of a dose response to get adaptation. Mm -hmm. But when we talk about recovery from day to day, we start to see women need a little bit more because we don't have the same kind of muscle enzymes for fast twitch that men do. Our bodies need a little bit more time to absorb that hard training, recover from it before we can hit it hard again. So I tend to tell people like, if you're looking at a week and you're someone who's like, I always have lots of energy at the beginning of the week and then it starts to taper off. It's like, okay, well, let's moderate that. Let's do like a Monday evening session and maybe a Tuesday morning session and then Wednesday's off and then maybe a Thursday evening session, Friday's off. And then you might do something on the weekend. Yeah. And when I say off, I mean really low intensity. And when you're doing a session, that's like your resistance training or your sprint. So it's you're trying to really like polarize where you're putting it, giving your body adequate recovery. Yeah. And the reason why you're bookending a Monday night and a Tuesday morning is so that Monday you're sleeping in, being able to deal with what happens on a Monday. And then you do your hard session Monday night, and then you get another dose response by doing it Tuesday morning. So it compounds hmm. the responses. You get a better oh, yeah. adaptation. Better stress. A more, there's more adaptation needed because you kind yeah. of, you put them so close together, but then you give yourself a bigger block of a break. Yeah. Because then you have all of Tuesday, the rest of Tuesday, all of Wednesday, okay. most of Thursday, then you hit Friday. And then Friday is really, really hard again, and your body can handle it. Damn. Okay, I'd be remiss though to, before I move on to not ask about body recomposition sort of puzzle of yeah, like what's the quickest way to do that to have a body recomp? And then I'm curious about like bulking and cutting. That's not something that I've ever done. I'm not sure it's something I'd really love to do, but it seems like it's the sometimes the quickest way to get certain results just because you give yourself the adequate nutrition to grow muscles, but then have sort of the cut. So what's the, what's the most efficient way to s maintain and grow lean bo body mass, but then mm -hmm. reduce body fat? When we're looking at, you had the key factor there, like eating to build your muscle because so many women don't eat enough and you need abundance to actually build muscle. Right. So you're doing your heavy resistance training. And for women, we know that when you're doing heavy resistance training, especially like squats and deadlifts, it increases the mobilization of abdominal fat. So by the nature of actually doing resistance training, you're helping body recomp. So if you're doing your build phase, right, and you're polarizing, like I just said, like the double dose and then another hard one, so you can actually get harder. Then we look strategically to do one sprint interval, maybe on Wednesday night. And we have a slight calorie restriction every night. So when we're looking at what are we doing? Okay, we're going to take out maybe 150 to 200 calories every night, but only over the course of one block of training. So you build and you're like, I got to cut. Okay, how am I going to cut? 
Well, we keep our resistance training and we add in one sprint interval session to really top in, like create a, dish, a different stress. Mm-hmm. And then we have a very slight calorie restriction. So it's Along- kind of, so you're bulking and cutting within the week. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then the other thing is really upping that protein. So we see that when you're in a calorie deficit, if you are maintaining that 1.1 to 1.2 grams per pound, you strip body fat and you keep your lean mass. So women who are eating a lot and they're like, yeah, I need protein, protein, protein. It's like, it's really hard press. Even with my Olympic lifters, they're still not eating enough protein to get that muscle. Cause it's really hard to think about how much protein you need to eat. Cause they're like, what do you mean? I need 150 to 160 grams a day. It's like, well, that's what you need to build it and to, and to lose some of the body fat. So protein becomes really important. Yeah. There is a study I've been talking about recently. Cause a friend of mine from um, Florida, he posted it and he's like, look at this really cool study on protein. And they took, um, normal weight, but obese women. So, you know, like skinny fat mm-hmm. and there was this big cohort and they split them and none of them were doing exercise. They're just normal daily life. And they split them. And all they did was increase the protein intake in one group to 1.6 grams per kilo. So that's just right around that 0.8 to 0.9 grams yeah. per pound. Mm-hmm. And then the other group maintained their normal, which was like 0.8 grams per kilo. So what is that 0.5 per pound ish, or maybe a little bit less yeah. over the course of 12 weeks, no exercise, people with a higher protein intake completely recomp their body. No exercise. The same, same calories too. Same like, calories. Like, okay. Got it. They just, no just calorie like change macro adjustment. Yep, exactly. So protein is so powerful when you're bumping it up and your body's like, Ooh, look at this. I can build lean mass. I don't need to store fat because I can build lean. I have the building blocks. Yes, exactly. So, you know, we talk about exercise and resistance training being the key all, but if you don't have adequate protein, you're not going to maximize that and you're not going to recomp. So protein, super important. And then as far as for those people who don't consume animal protein, like yourself, what, what are your best tips to get enough protein? Wide variety wide variety of fruits, veggies. I know people are like, what? Veggies, protein, peas, green peas, lots of protein in there, right? And NAMI, we look at nuts and seeds. We look at sprouted grain breads. Bread's good, especially a lot of protein in sprouted grain breads. Tempeh for fermentation. I'm not a fan of tofu, primarily because I can't handle soy, but I don't find it a really fantastic source of protein. I'd rather err on the side of tempeh because you have more bang for your buck. We're Mm -hmm. looking at nutrient density. Um, and then, yeah, and there's times and places when you're really trying to up your protein where you have to supplement and that's just part of it. Like you can't eat powder, enough. To powder too protein, full. Yeah. 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 So don't be afraid to implement it. It's there to use. Let's finish off with just sort of like a little bit of a wake up call of the, of birth for birth control, because I feel like it's one of those things that in the general population is getting a lot of awareness to its, um, detriment, everything from, uh, you know, disrupting your not having a real cycle and having a withdrawal bleed, which mm-hmm. I didn't even know until a few years ago. Um, cause I took birth control for 16 years. Um, to every to even the studies showing that women that are on contraceptive oral comp- contraceptive or birth control are choosing different men than if they weren't on birth control they choose yep. more feminine men when they're on birth control than when they're off so essentially if you've got a if you if your woman has is on birth control you're together and then she gets off of it she might not like you. Yep. I know. It's strange, isn't it? It is. And then I just think about the poor side effect of it reducing testosterone, correct? It reduces testosterone in in women yeah. as well, which I think I took it for my whole career. So essentially, this is what was happening with my much needed, like, uh, for yeah, my job. Yep. Like, yep. fuck. When we look at OCs, And the combined oral contraceptive pill, right? So when we look at it, there's so many different formulations. When we're looking at the progestin component, that's the important part. This is where we start to see that you have a lot of aggression depending on what, if it's more androgenic. So this is why the studies are coming out. It's like, if a woman's on an OC and she's looking for a more effeminate man, it's because she feel the 
androgenicity of that progestin is making her like really aggressive. And it's like, yeah, okay. I want to be the alpha in the, in the relationship here. When we look from performance metrics, um, we look at the estrogen and the progesterone component. So we know that if someone is using a 30 microgram dose of estradiol in their oral contraceptive pill, it builds muscle really easily, but Mm -hmm. there's no strength that accompanies that muscle bulk. Weird. So it's like, why do I want to build more muscle fibers when it doesn't actually make me stronger? If we look at 20 microgram dose, it doesn't really do anything different than naturally cycling. We look at oxidative stress. It's much higher just across the board for women who are taking oral contraceptive pill. We see inflammation factors much higher for women using it across the board. And we also see that training schematics change. So we know that if we are looking at training really, really hard, it's the first five days of the active pill where you can push hard and recover well. And it's the last five days of the placebo pill that you can train really, really hard and recover well. Because when you're on it, it's not like you have the steady state dose. You have a peak and a trough every day, which is why- it's 10 days from the start of your bleed, essentially ish until five days in, five days after ish. So when we look at the modernization of medicine and scientific design, it was at a point where men were like, women are- have smaller brains and they're delicate flowers and they don't know anything. So when we look at like how things evolved, it's all been through that male lens. So scientific design has always been through the male lens. And I mean, it was a point not too long ago where women going through perimenopause were put in insane asylums because no one understood what was going on. And if you look retrospectively, almost all the women that were killed as witches in the Salem witch hunt were women who were perimenopausal because of hot flashes and mood disorders. So people like primarily men are like, these women are crazy and they're witches. So there's a long history of the male lens on all of this stuff. So we look specifically at scientific design. Originally, it was male rats and it was cis men. And that model is broken. And people are seeing that it's broken. We see things like Ambien. You know, it stays in the women's system a lot longer. So people are like, oh, gosh, what the hell? So medical community, even though it was like in the 90s that NIH said, you can't just use male rats. You can't just use men. But it's just in the past four to five years where people are like, oh, my gosh. Yeah, really? We have to use women. And I will say one benefit of the COVID pandemic is the outcomes between women and men in the vaccine and the vaccine rates and success in the vaccine. What was that? I don't even know that statistic. It was better for women. Women got less sick and they had less time being sick than men. And then they're looking now at long COVID and unfortunately it's reversed. But now people are really going, what's going on? If that happened, then there are sex differences. So if, if it was not that case, if men did better than women, never would have been the conversation, but because women did better than men on the vaccine, it made so many people globally in the medical community look up and be like, what? And then in sports science and nutrition, I've been in this for a gosh, couple of decades, but it's really just been in the past four or five years where we've had you know, like Don Scott, who's been tracking menstrual cycle on the U S soccer team coming out and saying, Hey, We've had better outcomes when we're tracking the menstrual cycle. And people are like, what? What do you mean? And so it's been feeding forward back into the scientific community. You have to clean up that scientific design and include women. If you like this clip and you want to hear the whole episode, click at the bottom of your screen.